complicated. Let me ask you about Russia. So it looks like U.S. policy now is we're not going to train and equip has failed. So now we're going to turn to the Russians for help. These are the same Russians who have uh, who are busy in Ukraine doing things we don't like them to do. The Israelis think that the Russians are involved with Hezbollah. Why are we turning to the Russians? Well, I hope we're not turning to the Russians. Um, let me just quickly say that uh, I wouldn't give up on train and equip, but I sure would uh, push the Pentagon to take a hard look at why what has been done has been such a failure and what more we could do to support uh, like Kurdish fighters who are on the front lines. And one of the difficulties we had in the train and equip is that we basically were trying to train people to only take on ISIS and terrorist networks. We were not training and equipping them to take on Assad or his military or his proxies, which include Hezbollah, by the way. I hope we're not turning to the Russians in that way. I hope what we're doing, and this is what I support, and I heard uh, Secretary Kerry say this is what we will be doing, and I think Secretary Carter has begun these conversations. First of all, we have to figure out what they are doing. You know, Russia has a long interest in Syria. They've had a base, in, uh, a naval base in Syria for a long time. They have a connection because a lot of Syrians were educated in the Cold War in Moscow, and a lot of Russians actually moved to Syria. So they have not only deep links to Syria and Syrians, but they intend to support Assad for their own reasons. And we need to really unpeel what it is they're trying to accomplish and work with others to try to contain them. And I want to just end by saying, if they are providing any equipment to Hezbollah, if they are supporting Hezbollah, which is the main fighting force on behalf of the Iranians to support Assad, but also a deadly threat to Israel, then we have got to take actions, whether they're tougher sanctions or other kinds of actions, to try to prevent that from happening. I want to that Russia has now moved combat aircraft and surface-to-air missiles into Syria. Right. What do you think Putin is up to, and what would you do about it? Well, he's trying to take over parts of the world that he was not in. You know, he was there long ago, and now he's trying to go back. And the problem is that we have a president who he does not respect. He has absolutely no respect for the president, and maybe he has no fear of the United States any longer because of the fact that we're letting things go. Our military is not the same as it was. Obviously, it's being depleted. I see it in the real estate business all the time. I'm getting listings for army bases and naval bases and everything. They're selling so much so many things in so many places. And I say to myself, what's going on? But you see it all the time. Well, let's drill down on this, though. If, if, if President Putin has decided it's in his national interest to move into Syria, to move into Ukraine, what could you say to him that would get him to turn around? Well, I think it's all about leadership. It's about getting along with people. And, you know, I gave an answer that I thought was very good on the debate the other night, and a lot of people loved that answer. They agreed with that answer. And that's it. You get along with people. But just because and I, he gets along with you, that doesn't mean he's going to do no, something no, against but his you, national interests. No, no, interest. it's called, you know what it's called, George? It's called respect. I mean, he has no respect for the president. He doesn't talk to the president. They have absolutely no relationship. And you see the body language when they're together. The body language is absolutely horrible. Now, as far as Syria is concerned, it looks like he's trying to build up in Syria. And, you know, it's very interesting because with ISIS... Uh, we're fighting ISIS, and yet ISIS is fighting Assad. And Assad is probably saying, wow, isn't that nice that the Americans, that the United States comes in, and they're taking care of our enemy. You know, we have people that don't know what they're doing. But militarily, we're fighting ISIS, and ISIS now is fighting us instead of fighting Assad. I'm trying to and figure Assad out. is, hey, George, we're the best thing that ever happened to Assad. I'm just trying to figure out what you would do. I mean, are you saying that President Putin would actually do something against his national interest, if he perceives it that way, pull out of Syria just because he gets along with you? I'm not saying get along. George, the word isn't get along. The word, the word is respect. He has no respect for our country and our leadership at this, at this moment. And frankly, he's doing things that are very aggressive. And the reason he's doing them is because he does not have respect. So what is the single most important thing you would do to get him to respect you and turn around? Well, first of all, you, get, you have to get to know people. There's no communication. They have no communication whatsoever. I have it all the time in business. I get along with people that 
and frankly, there are some people, George, that I don't get along with, and, and there's no chemistry or whatever it may be, and then you find the people that do get along with them. But you have to, we, it's a chess game. Life is a big, fat, very high-level chess game. You have to know what you're doing. Now, I can tell you, I don't think you're going to want to start World War Three over Syria. I'm pretty sure you're not going to say that, because, you know, a lot of people said, oh, we want to confront them, and we want... I'm not sure that you want to start World War Three over Syria. That's for sure. I still haven't heard exactly what you're going to